Cool. Hey, y'all. Welcome to class. Good to see you. Um, uh, you're over there on my screen over there, so I'm going to be looking over there. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see me straight ahead, but it looks like you can. Um, and um, we're also going to stream this live, and we invited a bunch of other people to attend. But um, if you have any questions in class, um, feel free to ask them. I, I figured, you know, I'd give you a chance to um, ask questions, whatever questions that you have um, about the class coming up, about anything you need for your business, about your goals, about what to do next, like your next step. Um, any questions about InterNACHI or, or how you can leverage InterNACHI to be successful in reaching your goals? Anything you want. If you wanted to ask a question, we'll throw them up here, right? And then we'll just answer them as we go. So if you have a burning question, something that's been, you know, in your notes or something while you're coming to the first day of class and you want to ask it, or you want something accomplished by the end of the class training, you want to throw it up here because, because I can answer those questions directly if you want, you know, and share it with everybody. Or I could just like talk and talk, <laughs> you know, I can, I can talk forever about uh, home inspections, but do you have anything, anybody in class at the house of horrors, you four, do you have anything, a burning question you want to ask? Do you have something in mind? Is there definitely one thing you need and you can't figure it out? Or do you want me to talk about a particular topic like marketing or next steps, anything? So I guess one thing for me, yep. uh, Robert, one thing for me was, um, so I'm just starting a business off. I have no background in any of this type of thing. And I just did kind of a practice inspection of my own house. And yeah. one thing that I noticed was like the, the flow of how to do an inspection is one thing I'm wanting to kind of learn or get, because I felt like I was always going back and forth, you know, um, to one section then going back outside, going back inside, that sort of thing. Yep. So, just to make it more efficient. Yeah. Anybody else? Uh, ben, I'm also uh, just starting uh, my own business. And hey, how are like, you? Good. How you doing, man? Um, just starting out and like going to market to uh, different real estate agencies and realtors. Yep. Yep. Anybody else? Okay, let's start with those two things. Yeah. And then we'll talk about other things that'll be helpful, hopefully. You know, I never know if, if what I'm presenting is helpful or not. So I, I like to open up with questions. And uh, if you have anything, just raise your hand if you want me to stop and attend to a question or explain more something. But let's talk about doing the inspection itself. And then we'll talk about marketing to real estate agents, okay? So doing the inspection itself, that's probably uh, one of the most important things that you can spend time on. It really is how to do an inspection efficiently. Nobody wants to do an eight-hour inspection with you, even if it's free. <laughs> Nobody has that kind of time. That's not the expectation. The expectation is two to three hours for like a 3,000-square-foot house, let's say. Three bedrooms, two and a half baths, or something like that. That's about it. That's the world we live in, right? And within 24 hours, a full report written. Holy cow. And on top of that, <laughs> answering questions <laughs> of anybody that attends the inspection. That's the real estate agent, your client, your client's family, friends, Uncle Bob, who knows a lot, you know, on a weekend. And you're communicating. At the, all at the same time. So it is a lot to do. So the biggest thing, the most valuable thing you could do probably as a new inspector is to practice. Practice performing inspections that are of no risk to you, which means no client, no one paying you, no agreement, no contractual obligation. You're just practicing. And if you can practice on your home, your apartment, your condo, your townhouse, anything, wherever you live, practicing there at least 10 times is one of the best things you can do. Because as a new inspector, you're at a deficit. Everyone else has experience 
and you're lacking what is essential to do a, a critically good, competent inspection that people value. But it's all it's all available. That's the great thing. You don't have to pay for this experience. You're at the House of Horrors in order to have certified master inspectors train you, right? But to get the practical experience that you need to conduct in your head on time management and what to do next during an inspection, that is all on you. And that's it's really fun. It's so much fun to inspect the kitchen in your home 10 times and see how fast and efficient you can do it. When I say fast, I don't mean like run through it. I mean to be efficient. And it's about time management. And so what I consider is essential is um, if you want to be good at an inspection, you have to start with something. And I recommend going to the standards of practice and starting with these systems. And these systems, you can do them in any order, but these systems are the systems and components that you're required to inspect as a home inspector. But it's much more than that. It's a process. Like for me, I like to show up early before my client and inspect the roof. You don't have to get up on any roof surface, but you have to inspect the roof or disclaim it totally. So if you can get there early, that's the most difficult system. I mean, if you're going to use a ladder, that's the most dangerous system as well. So inspecting the roof. So how are you going to inspect the roof on your building or your house, or your friend's house, or your, your um, wife's friend's house, or your friend's friend's house? to get experience. And then you use the standards of practice to tell you what to inspect, what to describe, and what to report. And you put that on a checklist and you get that checklist on a mobile device. You can use a laptop if you wanted to, but that means you're going to be writing reports at night, right? And you're not going to be able to beat me because I'm going to write the report as I inspect. And at the end of the inspection, I'm done writing the report. I can get to another inspection where I can attend my clients even better. So it's about time efficiency, time management. The best time management tool is to invest in software that works on a mobile device. And I, we have a bunch of vendors who uh, are software providers and software companies, and they provide discounts to InterNACHI members. And I would ask for a free trial and play around with it. Make sure it goes on a mobile device. And then you use the standards of practice as like a, a baseline checklist of what to inspect and what you don't have to inspect. And you practice on each system. So when I do the roof inspection, a roof inspection on, on a typical home is gonna be about 10, 15 minutes, including Right, um, taking pictures and writing the report on my mobile device. And when I step down off of my ladder onto the ground and I'm going to the next system, which is exterior, I've, I'm done inspecting that one system. I'm done writing that one system and I'm ready to move on. And there's only nine, 12 systems, depending on how you see it. So I'm writing the report and I'm inspecting at the same time and I've done this before because I've already had a ton of practice on my own home. Before my first client, man, I should have 20 or 30 inspections under my belt. So you can, you can, um, you know, internet, she has this great wealth of online education and training because we're a home inspector college, but you have to apply that knowledge. And the best way to do it without any risk is to do free inspections on your own home or for your friend's home and get really good. And if you're gonna crash and burn with software, do it with a friend and have some fun, right? And um, that's probably the best thing to do, practice. Tonight, you know, is, here's a really good homework assignment. You're at the House of Horrors, this is the first day of class. Tonight, I don't know what your instructor is gonna assign you as homework, but. If you want to do my, my homework assignment, it's inspect the bathroom. So if you're at a hotel because you're staying overnight and near the House of Horrors class, inspect that bathroom 10 times. Get a checklist. Ask Miranda or someone in class for a paper checklist if you don't have software. We have paper checklists. 
or you can go online at InterNACHI's checklist. You can use InterNACHI's checklist. It's an online thing. You can use your phone or desktop and inspect the bathroom. A bathroom is about five, 10 minutes, no more than that. I mean, I know every system, a heating system, cooling system, 20, electrical panel, 15. And you add them all up and you're done in about two hours. Like if I, I'm, you have to be so good at time management that if you're, if your inspection starts at 8 a.m., at 10 a.m., you should know where you are in the house. Like for me, two hours later, I should be in the attic. If I start an inspection at 8 a.m., I'm going to go through all the systems. And at 10 a.m., I should be in the attic. If I'm in the attic, I know I've got this inspection done efficiently. I'm on time. I'm going to make some money. So it's all about time management. So great question. Great question. Practice. It's it's really true. Practice makes perfect, right? Is that the phrase? Marketing to real estate agents. We have a URL. It's called natcha.org slash uh, presentations. And I'll go there, okay? Natcha.org slash presentations. There's a ton of resources for um, networking with real estate agents, including um, this little video uh, that I did. It's a 10-minute video about all the resources and personal experience about how to network with the real estate agents. We have slides. If you ever get the chance to do a presentation at a real estate office or offer to do a presentation in a real estate office, again, nobody wants an eight hour presentation. Nobody wants an eight minute presentation. It has to be like a couple minutes and say something of value. Like here's a, a AFCI presentation. It's a PowerPoint slide. You can customize it, put your logo on the front slide contact information on the last slide in between really good, juicy, concise information about AFCIs. And if you provide somebody with valuable information, they should value that, right? The uh, information all about bragging about yourself, but how much experience you have um, is of no value. And so, um, and you're in the world of doing home inspections and edu educating people about their homes showing passion for inspecting homes and adding value to the conversation. You're not really in the business of providing real estate agents CE credits. That's a whole different kind of business, right? As a new inspector, focus and stick to what, what you're really good at, which is educating people about their homes. So um, go to this page, natcha.org slash presentations, and also talk about like how hiring real estate agents to grow your inspection business is a great idea. And it's very easy to do. Um, there's a couple of things in that video about how to simply contact real estate agents. We all know where they are. They're online and there are certain groups and forums that they're on. And you can just start a conversation without selling yourself. Um, first marketing or thumbs up or liking, and then maybe commenting and not really selling anything until it feels right to talk about what you're doing and any conversation that you have, whether it's networking th with real estate agents, doing a presentation in an office or something on social media, you always do two things. You show your passion for inspecting. I love inspecting homes and buildings. Me personally, can't, can't stop it. It's really a lot of fun. But I also, if I'm in a conversation with a potential client of mine or a client, I'm adding value. I'm not just blabbing or promoting myself. I'm really talking about solving people's problems, giving them information so that they can make smart decisions, helping people keep their homes healthy and safe and functioning and helping people fix stuff on their own before they become problems too big to fix for themselves. Man, if you can do that, and manage your time well, <laughs> uh, you've got it. You've got the keys to success right there. Okay. Any other questions? Any burning questions? All right. Well, let's go back to adding value. I want to talk about um, how to be a successful home inspector by adding value. And then we'll talk about how to go real quick for new inspectors from zero to 60 and then we'll talk about um, state-specific information that you may want from your local area.
Okay. So if you want to be a really successful home inspector, I was a home inspector in Southeastern PA, suburbs of Philadelphia for a dozen years, hundreds of really good inspectors as my competitors. And we are essentially number one. And I made a lot of cash as a home inspector, right? So if you want to become a successful home inspector, the principles are the same. They haven't changed because business is basically the same. You want to be providing incredible amount of value to your clients. You want to be a value-driven professional. And that means that you fully understand your job as a professional, as a professional certified inspector, and that is to provide overwhelming value, not just here's, here's some information, here's an inspection report. You want to provide overwhelming value to the person that's investing in you. And that's either an employer, if you want to work for a company that's hiring inspectors, that's for a client, or that's for a real estate agent who's referring work to you. You want to provide a massive return on their investment. They invest their time and money into you. You want to give them a good return on their investment. And this is true for your work as the business owner. And this is true as an employee of someone who hires you an inspector. And this is true for your friends and family, right? You want to provide the other person a lot of value for investing their time in you. And in the home inspection business, your marketing strategy is based upon this general rule. And the general rule for success in the home inspection business and in any business is if the perceived value, I perceive this value, it's, if, it's, if it's much greater than the cost, then it's a good decision. If the perceived value of this thing that you're giving, this service or product that you're offering is, is much greater than the cost, if the value of it is much greater than the cost, if the valuable information that you provide to your client is much greater than the cost of attaining that information, then it's going to be a great decision for them. So what value, the question is, so what value are you going to bring to your clients, your home buying clients, your home selling clients, your investors, your real estate agents? What value are you bringing? And here's the value. Here's the general value of a home inspection. We provide, as home inspectors, information so that our clients can make smart decisions. We can't make those decisions for them. Should I buy the house, right? Is there anything wrong with the house? What is wrong with the house? We're providing them that information that they can't get themselves. And you can't hire an AI robot to do it either. And we educate our clients. We educate them on how the home works and how to maintain it and how to fix problems that we find because we all want our homes to be safe and healthy and functioning well. And we want to know what to fix ourselves before those problems get too big to fix. That's the value of a home inspection. So in any conversation that you have in your business marketing strategy, you want to show that kind of passion for inspecting homes because you know the value of your service. And you always want to keep focusing on adding value to that conversation. Show passion and add value. You want to be a value-driven professional who can sell your knowledge and skills on the open market. That's essentially what we're all doing. As a home inspector, I have to think about other home inspectors in the open market trying to do what I'm doing. I'm trying to sell what I know and what I do in the open market and trying to get a lot of money out of it. If I want to charge a lot of money, I better provide an overwhelming amount of value. That's essentially what we're doing when we're competing with other inspectors. We're selling our knowledge, inspection knowledge and skills on the open market. And it's to potential clients, real estate agents, or employers. The trick is, that's what we're all doing. So you have to be unique. You have to be different and special. 
What makes you different from all the rest? If we're all doing a home inspection according to a standards of practice, if we're all writing home inspection reports, if we're all taking pictures, if we're all prompt and on, on time, if we're all friendly and courteous, then what makes me different from all the rest? Why would somebody choose Big Ben inspections over anybody else? And that's a mental exercise that you've got to do yourself. Why, why would somebody hire you instead of the next inspector who does about the same amount of stuff, the same kind of stuff? You know, the, the second homework assignment would, the first homework assignment is inspect the bathroom 10 times. Second homework assignment is look up the word commodity. Come on, come commodity. This is what you do not want to be in the home inspection business. This is something that can be just interchanged with anything, any other service that's similar. We don't want to be that. I want to be different from all the other inspectors because I provide incredible amount of value that's unique and special, maybe niche. So why would I hire you instead of another inspector? To help answer that question, I have two resources for you, okay? Let's go to one of them here. It's natchi.org slash simple. Natchi, oh, let me write it. Uh, well, well, well. Natchi.org slash simple. So you go to natchi.org slash simple and you'll see a playlist. That's a series of short videos that I did about inspection business and marketing. I tried to make it very simple. They're only a few minutes long, maybe less than a minute on some of them, just to make it very simple about business and marketing and adding value and um, being special different, unique, so you can stand out from all the rest. The other thing is, the other resource that we have to be valuable is to know how to run a business and market it. So you go to our education page, natchiorg slash education. Let me go there, natchiorg slash education. And you lose use the search field and you type in business. And the home inspection business and marketing course pops up. This is an excellent, great, valuable, <laughs> valuable business course. I don't know any other home inspection business and marketing course, especially provided by our college. We have our own college and this is a college course. And it goes over business and marketing. It also includes training and software and tools. And you can network with other inspectors, find a mentor, develop a website, and you get legal resources as well. It has everything you need to be a value-driven professional in this home inspection business. It also will help you switch your mental state of thinking about being the best inspector in the world to becoming a very good business owner who just happens to offer home inspections. That's another key to success because I personally know a lot of inspectors who have done all the training and they're fantastic inspectors, but they don't know how to run a business or market themselves. So you have to do both. Now it sounds overwhelming. I'd be, if I was sitting in your chair, I'd be like, oh my God, that's over. That's too much information. The great thing is internet. has all these resources whenever you want them. And most of these resources, if not all of them are free and online. So you're taking this class in order to get the hands-on experience of this amazing facility that has more defects than you can ever imagine. You can practice on, let's say, inspecting the roof. So, so get get one, of, I think there's 12 different types of roofs on the, on the House of Horrors. Pick one of them and inspect it, right? Inspect the, the fl step flashing, counter flashing, inspect the fastening, inspect, inspect the surface condition, inspect the drip edge anything under underlayment, whatever you want to do, think of you inspecting a home. And this is one of the roofs that you're inspecting. And then try to transfer that information, your observations onto a checklist, paper, pencil, or software in order to be managing your time well and being efficient. Yep. And see what value you can provide.
Imagine talking to somebody about that system in the House of Horrors that you inspected and tell them what is wrong and what needs to be fixed and why. So it's uh, don't be overwhelmed. Internet G is here. We have a ton of mentors. We have inspectors all over the world. You can meet them online. Our, our mentoring program is really great. If you wanted to go there and check it out and find a mentor, it's natchee.org slash mentoring, natchee.org slash mentoring. You're not alone. We have an online forum. We have social media. We have groups. So um, you're not alone. And if you ever need me, you can just email me too, and I can find that resource for you. Okay, so we answered those two questions about doing an inspection, the flow, getting practice, marketing to agents, we, we did that. And then we talked about business and marketing, being a value-driven professional and overwhelming your clients with value in relation to the cost. Okay, you wanna go to the next thing? Zero to 60 for a new inspector or does anybody have any questions? Any questions? Okay, let's go zero to 60. If, you, if you're a new inspector and you wanted to know where everything is, what, what is the step-by-step -step process of becoming successful? Where is it written? So I can just use it as a checklist and start checking these things off. I'd go to nachi.org slash everything. nachi.org slash everything. If we go there, nachi.org slash everything. There is a 15 steps to becoming successful as a home inspector. Okay. And the first five steps are critical because at that point you can start making money as a home inspector. So the first five have to be done. There's no way you can skip it and make money. So go through these first five steps by clicking every link that's available. Don't worry about step six to 15. If you're new, do the first five, and you may have already done one or two of them. The first one is join InterNACHI. Why join InterNACHI? Because you can't do this alone. And InterNACHI has a ton of resources that are available to all members for free. And it's up to you to figure out what resource you wanna leverage in order to be successful and do that efficiently. So join InterNACHI. It's like a whole world of opportunity opens up for InterNACHI members. Step two is getting trained and certified. And there's a few things you could do. There's a bunch of links here, but basically you wanna get all that knowledge in your head, apply it with your hands so you can ha have that skill set that is valuable on site, right? So that you have that practice within you. So get the knowledge and skills that you need by taking every online course that's available. But we have a really good one. If you're totally new and you're trying to figure out like, hmm, what, you know, how is a, how's a hot water tank actually work? Maybe you're weak in electrical bonding and grounding, right? We have an introduction to home inspections course on that. How do I get there? Again, Natural.org slash everything. Step one, join industry. Step two, get trained and certified and experience. If you're trying to figure out, well, how do I get experience? Um, there's a, a step-by-step -step process. And there's a link here to go to the master class. And that kind of gives you a step-by-step -step process on how to gain experience. We already talked about inspecting the roof 10 times, inspecting the bathroom, inspecting the kitchen. It's essentially that. You inspect a system, get efficient, figure out your checklists, figure out your narratives or your sentences that you want to state during your in your report by you know having software that simply you click that sentence, I flushed the toilets and ran water at all the sinks and tubs and showers. And then the other sentence might be, I observed an active plumbing leak or I did not observe an active plumbing leak, something like that. So you want to practice that, inspecting according to a standards of practice, inspection flow, using software and writing a report. And then you watch somebody else do it. So we have resources of like watching a certified master inspector inspect the bathroom. We have a couple of those videos. 
and you gain experience like that. It's like as if you're following, it's the ultimate ride along. You inspect a little bit and then you watch a certified master inspector inspect the same thing. And then you come back and improve your process. It's expensive to do a ride along. It, it takes an investment of time and or money. But if you wanted to do it online, we have that available. Step three is a purchase inspection tools and software. You can make $100,000 with a flashlight, a GFCI tester, and maybe a voltage lead tester as a home inspector. Those, those three tools. The problem is, right, that on the open market, there are other inspectors using the same tools. So if you're using the same tools, what makes you different from all the rest? So you want to make some money and then maybe consider putting some investment in like a, a tool that makes you different from all the rest, a special tool, like an infrared camera. This is a FLIR C3, a C5, C5. It's a few hundred dollars, but it allows you to see things that you wouldn't normally be able to see without it. It allows you to see things that no one else can see without using one of these. That's pretty amazing. I mean, that, that really bridges a gap for a lot of home inspectors, especially new ones. Right? You get to compete with a lot of people simply by investing in a special tool, but you, you don't have to. I mean, the, the basic tools are flashlight, high lumens flashlight, GFCI tester, and a voltage tester where you test, touch something and see if it's live or not. It's more of like a safety issue. And then software. So if you click this link, you get discounts on tools and software. And software is really important. And it's probably one of the most expensive things you're going to buy. It could be a monthly fee or an annual fee, but it's vitally important. And then step four is how do you calculate profitable inspection fees? There's a little video here about how to make money. And, you know, it's really important if you're, if you're going to be hired by somebody, if you want to be hired by somebody, you ought to have an idea of how your boss calculated the inspection fee and why that is a good price in comparison with the value that you're providing. You're always thinking about as a value-driven profession, you're always driven by giving value to people in relation to the cost. So if, if like people, if potential clients can't really tell the difference between the value you provide and the cost, if they're like, ah, that's, that seems pretty expensive in relation to what we're going to get out of it you've got a problem. You have a major problem with your brand or your, your marketing or your services or your communication. When someone lands on your website or picks up a flyer designed by InterNACHI's marketing team, it should be real quick within a second or two of the overwhelming value you're providing in relation to the cost. That's the key to success. That's the key to success in any business, actually. So keep thinking about that. The fifth um, one is get a, it's really about marketing, the basics of marketing, which is to get your business online, getting a logo, you need a logo from InterNACHI's marketing team. This is one of the reasons why you're a member of InterNACHI because you can leverage the resources that InterNACHI provides to members. So InterNACHI has a marketing team. It's a half a dozen professional, highly creative illustrators and consultants and um, designers and they will design anything you want. And the, all that design work is free. You just pay for the printing. So if you wanted something designed, um, a business card designed with a new logo, you, you can go to Vistaprint and buy a box of business cards, right? And they say you can design it yourself or it's a free to, I would go to InterNACHI's marketing team, let them design that business card for you, that logo, professional logo. Don't, don't have your cousin design it. Don't download anything from the internet. That's copyright. Have InterNACHI's marketing team work for you for free. That's an incredible amount of value for the cost. <laughs> See, you can't possibly afford, especially if you're a new inspector, to hire six people dedicated to work on your marketing at any time you want. You want something to design? You need some help in trying to figure out value and communicating that value in a flyer. That's that internet cheese marketing team. Leverage that. Have them des design a, a logo and a business card. It's probably like a hundred bucks. 
you need business cards, you need a logo. And then you take all that juicy content, the color, the, the feel, the, the content, and put it online and get a website. And as soon as you have a website, update your internet G profile with that website. Now you have to be certified and you have to have a, a website. I'm going to show you what happens when you do that. And you could probably do that during class if you wanted to. Let, let me log in as, um. what is this one? Yeah, this is my fake uh, home inspector account. Big Ben Inspections. I'm going to log in top right corner on any natchi.org um, page. I'm going to log into my dashboard. Yeah. I'm going to scroll down. And on the left side, there is uh, profile and settings. Okay. Profile and settings. I'm going to update my profile. I'm going to make sure that my phone number is there. Um, NAP, name, address, phone number. Every marketing piece online, business profile, Google business profile. Um, it's for SEO. It's for marketing. It's for, you need a name, address, and phone number. So you have to have your phone number, your company name, your address, and then your email. And then this is the critical part. Company website. Why would you put your company website on your InterNACHI dashboard? Because InterNACHI is this huge organization. We have this huge online presence on the internet. And we're looking for people who are searching for a home inspector in your area. And then we get that person and direct them to your website. And you can watch those people land on your website. We have little statistics. Everyone, everyone has a dashboard and at the bottom of your dashboard, you can watch people land on your website and you can get a count, number of counts. So if you do like an email marketing campaign to a bunch of people, on a certain day, you can see the stats, the analytics, they call it, how many people have landed on my website. And it actually will generate those leads for you for free. You just have to do those first few steps. Um, and that's at natcha.org slash everything. Get, get to that sixth step, get to, you know, complete those first five steps so you can start making money. I was uh, teaching a class at the Colorado House of Horrors, and at the end of my presentation, um, someone raised their hand and said, uh, I just got a job. It's really true. Like, you know, they got certified before they arrived at the class, and they updated their profile, and they got a ping. It, it can happen that fast. So it's really good. It's a really good service. Internet actually does a couple things really well, two things really well. We, we help you make a lot of money as a successful home inspector by giving you all these resources that you can leverage. And we also, because of our size, we help you keep money in your pocket by negotiating with vendors like for software or tools, a discount for InterNACHI members. So if you're ever talking to somebody outside of the family, the InterNACHI family, outside the network, you're talking to a vendor, a third-party vendor, has nothing to do with InterNACHI, just ask them for a discount because you're an InterNACHI member. Insist on it, okay? If you can't get it, email us. We'll help you out. Everybody should be taking care of InterNACHI members really well, and that's you. State-specific information. So if I log into my InterNACHI dashboard, and I go to my dashboard, and I go to bottom left and it says local resources it doesn't matter where you're from or what country you're from uh, if you're from colorado you click the colorado button if you're from florida illinois if you're from another country um, nova scotia costa rica france and we have specific information just for you local information so you're in colorado right now five students um go to natcha.org or go to your dashboard click local resources and then scroll down and you can see the, um, you can get insurance if you wanted to. Uh, we have partners. This is the really nice resource. We got a ton of chapters. So we have mentors. We have mentoring program, free mentoring, and we also have chapters. So you're not alone. I, I like to go to the, there's a local chapter here in Raleigh. We meet every month. We have burger and beer and we talk about business. 
and I try to help inspectors out, right? It's really a lot of fun. And there's other resources as well, including real estate cards. So if you wanted to pass out a nice real estate card that has a one, two, three step process for agents to get free CE provided by Internachi, we have real estate cards. You can just order those real estate cards. If you wanted to be a radon tester, and this is very similar to any state page that you may land. We have, if you wanted to, um, another way to make money, one way to make money is to do something different from home inspections, a different revenue stream, like commercial inspections. We have those resources for you as well. Just a ton of resources. That's one of the things that InterNACHI does. We just have a ton of resources and we try to help out. Our focus is to help out inspectors so that they are successful. Okay. So I went through a lot, right? There's a, there's a lot to do. If you, if you do all the resources, that's crazy. You have to figure out what resources make sense to you. And if you wanted to do the basic things, like you can go to get started in your dashboard and make sure that you are doing these first few things in order to be a certified inspector. There are six things you have to do. They're outlined right here. You have to pass the online exam. You have to join InterNACHI. Standards of practice and code of ethics. That's only a couple of hours. You have to do four mock inspection reports. You could do them right there at the House of Horrors or at your own home or your friend's home. And then you just sign an affidavit. And then you are a certified home inspector. You update your profile and watch a job come in. Yeah. Any, any uh, questions? We've gone over a lot in about 50 minutes. Any qu questions online? Let's see. What's that page again? I'm not sure, Ramon. I'm not sure what page you were talking about, but there are the pages here. Um, Chase asks, what's the best software for billing, scheduling, auto emails, analysis, et cetera, for a new inspector, ISN versus Spectora? Yep, those ISN, Spectora, Home Inspector Pro, um, Home Gauge, um, all these are really good pieces of software and it's really a preference. So you have to just try them out um, or go online and just ask those questions and listen to the responses. Um, I like software that provide that provides um, very good service and prices for our members. <laughs> That's the software that I, I recommend. Um, I have had all software on my phone. So I've had Easy, I've had Home Inspector Pro, I've had Home Gauge. Uh, I have Spectora, so I know I'm familiar with all of them. Um, and uh, yeah, I would just, what you want to do is you want to compare, uh, like get a piece of paper vertically and write down all the benefits to each software, all the value that you receive in, in comparison to the cost. <laughs> it's the same general rule, right? So look for overwhelming value in comparison to the cost. And if the perceived value of that software is greater than the cost, then it's a good decision. You can't mess up. So it works both ways. If you wanted to buy something, use that general rule. If you wanted to sell your services on the open market, use that rule. Um, is there somewhere to look up the average inspection cost in your area? Yep. So go to... Spy on your competition, inspectorseek.com, inspectorseek.com. That's a short URL. I think if you go to any natcha.org page, there's a link up here to find an inspector in your area or inspectorseek.com. And let's see, in um, you guys are in Boulder, 80301, 80303, something like that. So you can search for that zip code and mark. He pops up and you can see if he um, has fees on his website and he does, right? But it also has call for a quote and um, that's a one page website. I think Mark should update his website here. Um, that's Alicia. How about David Mack? Um, David doesn't put, didn't update his profile with the website. So if I was a consumer um, looking for the price of David's uh, services, I can't find it.
because David didn't, he doesn't have a, a website or he has one and didn't update his profile. So it, David's not going to get that lead. Here's Tamara. She runs a chapter, prospective property inspections. And so you could just, you know, find the fees. If I was Tamara, I would put fees here. So you can go like Big Ben inspections, right? Here, here's what I like. I like tabs that say home services, right? And under services, fees, right? I just want to get it out there. I don't want people frustrated looking for information that should be readily available on my marketing and website. And I don't want anybody calling me and asking me how much is a home inspection? I don't have that kind of time and I'm not very good at sales. So I might as well just give them that information. And my job as a business owner is to have a marketing strategy that communicates overwhelming value in relation to the cost. And the people that call me are convinced of that. And that's the kind of phone call that I want to invest my time in. People who call me have already been convinced by my marketing strategy that it's a good decision to hire me. All I have to do is say yes. It's the easiest phone call in the whole world. Also have an online scheduling system. Your website should have an online scheduler. See this little button that says, call me now? That's a free button for internet inspectors. You can put that button right there. You click it. Your client who is online with their mouse, you know, clicks this, your phone rings, their phone rings. It's an amazing free service. So you make it easy for people to find information and even easier to schedule a phone call with you. Um, let's see. Killian asks, would you recommend a new inspector use their cell phone number or a Google number on their website? Right. That, that's up to you. I mean, I would think um, try to keep overhead costs down as low as possible for the first entire year of your business. So maybe just leverage an existing phone number. Right. And then split it off and take it from there. And there's many different kinds of options available. You can get a second phone number, you can get a business line. You can use things like a dial pad, go to dialpad.com. You can uh, use a Google phone, not business phone number. There's other services and there's a fee associated with it. So if it's important to you, um, you know, one of the best ways to make money, keep making money is to reduce overhead costs. And especially in the first boy, six months. So maybe later I would think about splitting that up. So I'm not bothered so that I can literally split business from personal using a different phone number. That's, these are great questions. Great question. Any other questions? Henry asks, uh, is home inspection business good in California? Uh, I think it changes from almost zip code to zip code sometimes when I talk to inspectors all over the place. Some inspectors are not busy at all and some inspectors are overwhelmingly busy. And you can see that on social media. You can see the inspectors who are successful. And so the, the people on social media and online forum and on Facebook who seem to have you know, like the key to success, you should follow them so that you get their feed and you can look at them and see what they do and how they speak and how they market themselves. I bet they're online doing two things. <laughs> I keep pounding this in. I'm sorry if I could say it over and over again. I bet they're online if you follow anybody, but they're online doing two things. You know what those two things are? Showing their passion for inspecting homes and adding value to the conversation. This, it, if, you, if you follow successful home inspectors, they'll be doing those two things. It's because it works, right? They don't do anything else. They don't have time to do anything that doesn't work. They only do two things. And I recommend all of our internet inspectors do those two things. So is it good in California? Man, I think, I think you need to ask, is it good in your 20 mile radius? And you do that by spying. You do that by going to a natchee.org page and clicking find an inspector near you and then typing in your zip code and spying. You can also do, um, we also have a map. I don't know if everybody knows it, but membership. I, I'm not even sure of the URL, membership stats. There it is. And so there's, we have a map 
also. So you can zoom in and see where the inspectors are. Like there's a lot of inspectors in Sacramento and not uh, in San Francisco, but even like where, like, you know, you've got this to spy on and figure out how you can compete in the open market with these inspectors and see if they're doing well or not. Maybe join a chapter in that area. Maybe find a mentor in that area and ask, how are inspections going in California? Okay. Uh, what about using LinkedIn, James? Yeah. So I did, um, I did a video. We go back to presentations. I did a video. Uh, the second video down is about hiring a real estate agent for your inspection business. And I show you exactly how to find real estate agents that you want to talk to. There are real estate agents that you do not want to talk to. There are upper echelon real estate agents that new inspectors should not be talking to because that's going to be a waste of your time and their time. They're not going to listen to you. You have to get to a certain level. Um, there's there's a lot of real estate agents. It's two, 2 million in the United States or something. And maybe the top 5% sell 80, 90% of all <laughs> sales. You go to those like LinkedIn and realtor.com and other uh, websites and actually do a filter search for agents in your area who are not that busy. And I bet if you offer them something of value, maybe a free inspection or something, or start a conversation, but they know other agents in that area and you get the ball rolling in that way. It's a long, it's a long marketing sometimes is a, is a long-term strategy and having conversations is certainly that long-term strategy. It takes a while to build that conversation to the point where you're, you're seen as a, a third party neutral trusted professional has incredible amount of information that everyone should have. That takes a while. If you don't have that kind of time as a new inspector, leverage InterNACHI's marketing team. Let them work for you. Uh, Killian asks, do you need to use specific verbiage in your contract when offering a free inspection? Um, uh, I, would, I would find a local business attorney to answer that question. Um, they'll, they'll, they'll provide that answer to you. I don't want to give you that, my, my opinion, because it's not going to help, right? There's a couple other reasons why you would want to ask a local business attorney that, because when you do home inspections for money, you may bump up against people who just aren't happy. And that local business attorney is going to help you respond efficiently to that person who has a complaint so that they can, you can squash all that. So it's, they're going to help you that local business attorney. I had one, right? I had one and he went through everything that we said in our marketing and in our contract and in our, in our report. And they had a response already prepped. If I ever received a letter, certified letter from an attorney or something like that. And that local business attorney probably knows the other attorney or the other law firm or the local magistrate. So it's really, without that, you're kind of like on your own trying to figure out what to do about contracts and legal things and what you can say. And if you're going to offer a free inspection, should there be something in that? Let let the professionals handle that kind of stuff so that you can sleep well at night. Okay, looking at the chat, no more questions. Any questions from class? Any burning questions? Yeah. Hey, how's it going? Um, Good. Just a quick question. Like, how often, um, like, during your home inspection business, have you had to deal with, you know, legal issues? Yeah. Uh, I was uh, taking the small claims court three times and one within five minutes each time. Uh, that's over 12 years. Um, one was they found, um, after moving in, they found signs of, termite infestation. And I think there was something going on with the, the bank and their termite inspection report because they didn't hire me to do the termite inspection. So they had somebody come in and they found something on the flooring 
the wooden flooring in the dining room. And so I got a call and our process was um, the client agrees for us to come back and do a reinspection. So we, we come back immediately and I walk into the home. I turn to my left. I still remember it. Turn to my left, see the dining room. And I can actually see the infestation, little, little grooves, you know, in the wood. There's something going on there on the floor in the dining room. And I go, oh, is that what we're talking about? Say, oh, yeah, that's it. That's the, and you know, you should see the crawl space and it's uh, like, I said, oh, okay, I got it. Let me look in my report. And I open up the report and there's a picture of a baby grand piano in that dining room with carpeting, with a carpet underneath the piano. And it was covering that infestation area. It's not on purpose. I'm not there to point a finger. I'm not there to not take any responsibility for anything. I'm just there to explain that obviously today is a different day. During the home inspection, it was a different condition, right? And I'm not moving a grand baby piano in order to look under the carpeting. So I was, you know, I was taking the court anyways, and I, I won. The judge understands standards of practice and limitations. The other one was um, somebody hired me to do an inspection, and they they talk, went to the small claims court. They wouldn't allow me to come back. They they wanted to see me again in small claims, and they were suing me because um, they removed the carpeting in the house, like most most of my clients, home buyers. They changed the carpeting, and they smelled something, and it was um, cat urine smell in the padding underneath the carpeting. And obviously I'm not responsible for that. It's in, in the standards of practice. It's in my inspection report. And um, th that was thrown out by the judge immediately. Um, just explain, you know, have your attorney prepare things for you. And you just tell the small claims <laughs> judge, like, here's this, here's that, here's that. Whatever your attorney says to say, you just say it. And then you have everything and it, it goes away, right? Um, but there are instances where I, I totally screw up and then we take responsibility and we turn it into a marketing strategy. So one time I tested a GFCI tester in the garage. Um, for some strange reason, I didn't reset it. And there was a refrigerator filled with wine and they like cool wine, which is great. Um, and the wine was uh, ruined apparently within 24 hours. I don't know how that happens, but um, I had to go back I came back with flowers and wine and an empty check. And I replaced the cost of the wine that apparently went bad within 24 hours, whatever. And uh, I apologized. I said I should have, you know, reset the thing. And I wrote a letter afterwards how I took responsibility for um, my actions. I didn't reset the GFCI. Um, everything is working. That's good. But I didn't reset it. And I made everybody whole. When you take responsibility for a mistake and you make everybody whole, that isn't the end. You have to tell everybody that you made a mistake, you took responsibility and you made everybody whole and happy. Everyone's happy with me. They're more happy about that story went around the real estate office like crazy. So now if you want to refer work to me and my inspection company, if we ever make a mistake, we make everybody happy. We'll buy you flowers and wine, right? So- it was a marketing strategy. So you can, you take, you know, lemons and make lemonade or whatever like that. Right. Uh, Henry asks, is it better to start working? So I wouldn't worry too much about being sued just to have a local business attorney go through everything that you say, because that's essentially, um, uh, is that's what you're responsible for in court. You could say that, well, he said, she said during the inspection, but the attorney will probably ask you to read or someone is going to, or someone's going to be reading the small claims judge, um, magistrate is going to read what is, what, what was written. And so you have to write those reports well. And we have a, a course about how to write inspection reports. Um, well, let's see. Henry asks, is it better to start working for a firm or start on my home home inspection business? That is a personal, if you take the home inspection business course, um, the first chapter is, um, I think it's called, do you have what it takes? Because you have to ask yourself, do I have what it takes to um, be my own boss and to do everything and be responsible for everything? Or do I just want to work for someone else? And so it goes, that home inspection business course is really good for that.
Uh, Natalia, I always wondered why they want to sue you if you are not a builder. Yeah, I'm not sure what you mean there. But a lot of you can't stop anybody from suing you, but you certainly can be prepared to respond quickly and not even not even worry about it, right? And, and it happens very, not not often at all. It's a very rare thing for, a, you know, some kind of legal issue to come up during an inspection. If you are following the standards of practice and you're using all the legal resources provided by InterNACHI and you have a local business attorney, you're going to do just great. It's going to be so much fun. Don't be overwhelmed. Remember, remember, oh, remember, you're not responsible to find all the problems in a home. You're not responsible to find all the problems in a home. You're not responsible to find every defect. You're not responsible for that. You're not even responsible for future defects. You're not. You're not responsible for um, anything you can't see. You, you are responsible for reporting upon the defects that you both observe during the time of the inspection and you consider it to be major material defects. So the small little defects, you're not even, supposed, not even responsible for reporting on that. Cosmetic defect, not even responsible for that. Uh, dirty air filter, you're not responsible for it. You, you're going to be expected to report upon a dirty air filter. You may be asked to comment on the on the um, cosmetic defect, the, the bump in the door or something like that. But you're not responsible for finding all the problems in a home. And if you understand that, then man, it's a lot of fun inspecting homes, right? You do a great job, follow the standards of practice. You got the software, you got the legal stuff all, all backed up. And you're just having a lot of fun communicating because everybody wants a safe home. Everybody wants that home healthy. Everybody wants to know if there's anything wrong. How big of a problem is it? Can I fix it myself? What do I got to do before it becomes way out of control problem? What do I got to check, monitor, maybe during a rainstorm? That kind of stuff is a lot of fun to communicate and educate our clients about. Okay. All right, y'all. Let me leave you with my contact information, because this is all I do all day long, and I love it. My name is Ben Gramico. I'm from InterNACHI, and that's my email, ben at internachi.org. And if you have any questions about anything, anything at all, um, just hit me up, and I'll, I'll reply as fast as I can with the resources that you're looking for. Okay? All right, everybody. Thanks. Thanks for being in in class. Thanks for being online, everybody. Talk to you later. Miranda, I see you back there. Someone's back there. Someone's there you go. Thanks, Miranda. I'm going to take off now. All right. Bye y'all. Bye. <laughs>